Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. A broken down grump of an American archaeologist who spends his time with grave robbers. A worn out man in pursuit of an ancient mystical artifact of inexplicable value. A tale filled with rustic magic and wonder. Wait, I feel like I'm picking up something. These things never worked. This is Alice Rohrwacher's La Chimera. So, a chimera is a mythical creature which has parts from all sorts of different animals. Usually a lion's head with a goat head coming out of its back for good measure and a snake's head for a tail. You know, something like this. Yeah, you won't be seeing any of these next to Josh O'Connor in this one. But the point is what it represents, something wildly imaginative and dazzling, but implausible. Here, it's more like the impossible dream, the unrealizable yearnings of the heart. So really, this is a film about the one who got away. A bunch of us have had those, right? Gosh, and we had some good times together. Boy, she is a tomcat. Yet the movie's plot is kind of its own chimera, or hodgepodge of different parts. It's half fairy tale, half heist, plays like a Bond or an Indiana Jones movie at moments, and like something totally whimsical in others. This is just the Alice Rohrwacher way of doing things. La Chimera is the third film of a kind of loose trilogy, which are structurally and thematically similar. They are explorations of the Italy of days past and the present. They are full of sweet natural charms, gorgeous cinematography, and then these buried secret regrets. She's always looking at the relationship between history and tradition and the modern world. I mean, if we really look deeper here, you can find references to Orpheus, Fate, Romulus, and Remus. But let's save that for another video. Inevitably, when you get into the story, it becomes a deeper look at sacred things versus the profane. The former, in this case, is honoring the dead and the belongings that are buried with them. And the latter is the fact that these guys are desecrating tombs for these money-grabbing black market dealers. Then this gets into class distinctions between the wealthy and impoverished. The director almost portrays the work of Tom Baralis as artful and whimsical. We get long sequences of a guitarist and triangle player singing these numbers, which tell of their exploits almost heroically. This is in contradistinction to the brokers, who never actually get their hands dirty, but can't wait to greedily make money off of people's sacred belongings. So it's all heady stuff, but Rohrwacher never tells the story like that. No, she's often blending the realms of fantasy and reality. That's just how the director ties together the current universe of the living with these connections with the dead and gone. The mysticism works. It helps when you have some stellar actors on board. Josh O'Connor is about as far from his challenger's man of arrogance as he gets, but he's still exceptional in this role. Here, he's almost sleepwalking through his existence, a man who's become a shell of himself. He gives off this cool exterior while simply anguishing on the inside. The journey of the film is the journey of his character's search for a lost love, Benny Amina. Then there's the legendary beauty, Isabella Rossellini, playing this sharp-tongued, wealthy spinster who refuses to move on from her daughter's disappearance, even as her life and home appears to be falling apart around her. Finally, of course, when you have the realm of magic, you need ways of indicating this visually. So the cinematographer uses cool tricks like upside down frames and speeding up sequences. She also goes into 4-3 aspect ratio for the leading man's dreams about the girl. Together, it's a singular vision from a woman who has gotten pretty good at making these fairy tales along Italian countrysides. Okay, so the word of the day is meandering. The narrative of this film could best be described as ambling, and that's actually pretty kind. So if it works for you, if you're swept up in La Chimera's wonder, you're right there with Arthur's hunched frame. You too are searching for connections with the beyond, joining the hunt for Benny Amina. But if it doesn't, this one becomes slow and kind of all over the map. 
Which is all well and good, but the issue for me is there are moments when it feels like we're being kept at a distance. It's one thing to not know what is coming next. It's completely another to feel like we're left outside the protagonist's inner life. Because the film kind of wanders, it takes its good old time getting into the action. Though I guess this shouldn't really surprise us by now. Happy as Lazaro is similarly paced. You get this gorgeous, bucolic first hour of Arthur's search with this ragtag bunch of marauders. They are like what you'd find at a carnival, something Fellini would be proud of. It's just a lot of pretty shots and partying and gypsy living while they hunt for buried treasures. Then, in the second hour, La Chimera picks up a whole bunch. We get into modern cities and find evil henchmen and quasi-Bond villains trying to steal from our good old country gang. This whole section just has a lot more energy. I think the question becomes whether the slower first hour will lose some of you. Lastly, I think the conclusion of the film could be seen as ambiguous. The explanation could really go a couple different directions. I think I have my own interpretation of what is happening which is tied back to Greek mythology again, but for anyone looking for a more straightforward conclusion, you might leave this one a little stumped. So, what do we conclude? La Chimera is a whimsical, visually stunning journey that melds fantasy with reality exploring themes of love, loss, and the sacred versus the profane. While Josh O'Connor delivers a haunting performance as a man lost in his search for a connection with the past, the film's rambling narrative may test your patience if you prefer a more straightforward tale. Ultimately, La Chimera is a beautiful, enigmatic piece of cinema that invites you to get lost in its magic. But be prepared for a journey that's as puzzling as it is poetic. Well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this picture. FOF gives La Chimera 3.8 out of 5 stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to visit FermanOnFilm.com for even more movie content. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends.